From left to right, we got the XM193, SS109, M855, and finally the M855A1. I have been asked a countless number of times to test out all these different projectiles on steel, so I figured why not just test them all out against each other to see which one penetrates the deepest. I'm going to be shooting all of these cartridges out of this 26 inch bolt action setup here to ensure that we're getting just about the highest velocities possible. Speaking of velocity though, I'm going to be keeping this chronograph right here on the end of the muzzle to make sure we know how fast each one of the bullets is going. I already got some steel plates ready to go with reference points on them, so how's about we throw that quarter inch one into steel slid V2? I think we're good to go. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get this testing started. I'm going to be shooting the cartridges in the order that I laid it out at the beginning of the video. Well, that one definitely hit high, but it still went through even after hitting this post in the back. That's pretty impressive. The SS-109 definitely passed the quarter inch test. Same result for the M855 as well, only one left to go. Yep, that is a small clean hole right there. It actually looks like a different color than all the other ones, I guess because of that tip. With that kind of velocity, I think we could all assume that they were going through a quarter inch, but now let's step it up to a real challenge. And you already know that that challenge is a 3 8 inch plate. Good to go. Out of a 16 inch barrel at least, the 223 and the 556 definitely kind of struggle a little bit when it comes to 3 8 inch plate, but with that 26 inch barrel, I'm really hoping that it gets better performance. There we go. That one was pretty much right on the money, but how'd we do? I don't see any daylight through there. Let's check out the... Oh my gosh, that's about the biggest bulge you could get without it breaking through. That XM193 was just about as close as you could get to going through that 3 8 inch plate, but I have really high hopes for these next ones. That one was just about right on the money too. How'd we do in terms of performance? Oh, I think I see daylight. Let's check out the back. That's a pretty small hole. It looks like only the steel insert went through, but that still counts. All right, let's see if the M855 performed the same as the SS109. I can already see daylight. Let's check out the back. Whew. Looks like it was kind of going sideways or something, but it definitely went through. I still can't get over how close that XM193 was to going through. Surely the M855A1 could go through, but I don't want to assume anything, so let's go ahead and check it out. Well, I think it would help if I hit the plate and not the steel sled. Let's go ahead and try that again. That's a pretty nasty result, though. It pretty much stacked right next to the other one, but I think it was far enough away to prove that it could definitely go through 3 8 inch steel. Anyways, these things are pretty hard to get, so I don't have enough to do a retest. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're going all the way up to a half inch mild steel plate. Let's go ahead and put it in. I think we're good to go. If any of these went through the half inch plate, I'd be pretty shocked to say the least, but I don't want to assume anything, so let's go ahead and test all three. That one pretty much hit right on the post, so let's go ahead and try that again. You know what I just realized is that not only was it on the post pretty much, I accidentally switched up the bullets as well. That was an M855. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as the SS109. I'm just making excuses at this point. Let's go ahead and do a retest. Well, that one definitely didn't hit the post, but still... No dice there. The SS-109 did not go through a half inch. But that doesn't mean that both of the M855s won't go through, so let's go ahead and test those out. I really didn't want to hit the post this time, so I think I overcompensated. 
I don't see any daylight through there. Let's check out the... Oh, no, definitely no daylight. Well, we got one more round of test, and supposedly it has the best chance of going through this half-inch plate, but let's go ahead and see. Well, I was aiming for the middle of the plate, so it hit pretty close to where I wanted to. I really don't see any daylight through there. Let's check out the back. Oh my gosh. It actually went through. I think the jacket is balled up in there, and that's what was throwing me off. It actually went through the back. That is freaking nuts. I literally cannot believe I'm saying this, but it's time to move up to a three-quarter inch plate. Surely there is no way that it can go through this. Good to go. I'm just telling you right now, I don't think there's any way it went through this three quarter inch plate. I don't think so. Whew. It made a dimple on the back though. That is freaking nuts. There's the insert right there, I guess. On mild steel, that is some insane performance. We're gonna have to go back to the bench and see just how deep it penetrated in that three quarter inch plate, but I got a special surprise. This is an AR500 plate that's three eighths of an inch thick, so let's go ahead and see if any of the bullets could do anything to this. Good to go. The SS109 barely even left a crater on this plate. Pretty much the exact same performance with the regular M855 as well. Well, that one definitely popped the plate off, but as you can see, it really didn't do too much more than the other ones. A little bit more of a crater, but really not that much. AR500 is definitely a different beast compared to mild steel, but let's go back to the bench and see just how deep it penetrated on that three quarter inch plate. Because it's time to grind. <laughs> Before we measure this round, I wanted to let you know that the steel penetrator is still inside the steel, so we're only going to be able to measure to the base of that steel penetrator. Anyways, let's go ahead and measure. In the 3 quarter inch mild steel plate, the base of the M855A1 penetrator measured in at 0.238 inches. That may not seem like a lot, because it's really not, but considering that the tip actually bent the back side of the plate, there's no telling exactly how deep it went. If we're being completely honest though, I was not guessing that it was going to get past the half inch mild steel plate. I mean, that is super impressive performance for how small of a cartridge the 5.56 is. Wait, you want to know the difference between the SS109 and the M855? I mean, we already got the testing done and the M855A1 beat both of them, so... Okay, fine, I'll measure the SS109 and the M855. <laughs> So the SS109 penetrated 0.354 inches. The M855, on the other hand, penetrated 0.445 inches, which is quite the difference. I've gotten quite a few requests to test the difference between these two projectiles on steel, but after reading multiple different articles, I found out that other than the naming designation between the US and NATO, there really isn't a difference in the projectile itself. Just about every manufacturer out there uses M855 and SS109 in their titles, so I chose my ammo based on what I could find in the descriptions. Because of this, I did not use the same manufacturer, which I think is where we saw a big difference in penetration. If I had to guess, they used different manufacturing styles to produce these projectiles, and the M855 was going about 100 feet a second faster, which I would assume had something to do with the extra penetration. Regardless of these two projectiles, though, I think that we saw that the M855A1 is no joke when it comes to mild steel. I'm not sure why we weren't getting a reading on the chronograph, and I really wish that we would have. But anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. <laughs>